Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. In this video, we are driving the Kia Sorento EX Hybrid. Now, before you guys make any conclusions about what you think about Kia in the past, reverse your brain a little bit because this car is unbelievably premium. Uh, what we're gonna do in this video is drive it in three distinct environments that I like to test vehicles in. In the city and urban driving test really that hybrid system more than anything, that relationship between when the electric power is working, when the uh, combustion power is working. Then we're gonna take it out on the highway, test some of the driver assistance, see what happens when you don't touch the steering wheel and it tries to get your attention. Things that are pretty important on the highway. Also, we'll talk about ride comfort and noise. Then, of course, we're going to get it up into the mountains and test its sporting credentials. Now, before you comment away and say, this is not a performance car, totally understand going into it with that expectation, of course. However, we have a 1.6 liter turbocharged engine that makes somewhere around 230 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque. Uh, this particular one is front-wheel drive in hybrid trim, but we should test its sporting credentials. We need to get a good idea of chassis balance for every vehicle we test, so let's get it up into the canyons, in the city, and in the highway, as we do with every car we test, right here on Out of Spec Review. <laughs> Pulling out of the driveway here, I wanted to make note as well that we've done a pretty in-depth full tour of this vehicle, like a walkthrough of all of the features, the space, all of the things that you would want to see when the vehicle is stationary, and that is also on the same channel that you're watching this video on, so just go back a video and you'll see that. Anyway, let's go drive this thing. Well, first off, I have this pretty neat shifter in the middle that rotates to the left for reverse past the point of resistance. So if you push one notch to the left right when you hit a resistance point or one notch to the right, it's neutral. Then if you push past that little resistance point, then it goes reverse or drive. The thing I like about this dial compared to other automakers dials, one, it's really chunky, extremely premium, sort of like this carved out aluminum feeling. Feels like a watch almost, very high quality. Uh, this is a, um, a situation where it doesn't just rotate all the way around. So it will just go to the notch and then stop there. That's pretty nice. Behind that, I have another circular dial that is the driving modes. Right now I have it in eco mode, which I believe is the default startup mode. However, during my week of testing this car, I kind of just left it in eco mode most of the time. Then, of course, you also have a sport mode, which you rotate to the left for, and then there's a smart mode. In smart mode, it's actually kind of interesting. It will monitor your driving, basically just monitor your acceleration pedal usage. And the more accelerator pedal that you use, the more it pushes you up into sport mode. I think that's kind of a neat touch. And uh, other Hyundai products, Hyundai Kia products have this. Uh, the Hyundai products also gain a comfort mode. This car is no comfort. It's just eco or sport. And I kind of like that because it's a no compromise, you know, uh, hybrid vehicle that, you know, you're either going to drive it pretty nice and easy around town, or if you need to go for that quick pass, you just put it in sport mode and go. Uh, now this vehicle has a remote start. I am not sure what this guy is doing, pulling out onto the highway at two miles an hour in front of us. Uh, <laughs> you know, mornings in Colorado, it takes people a couple minutes to get going around here, I think, when you leave the house. So uh, yeah, not, not sure what that's all about. Anyway, uh, car has remote start, which is pretty great. So it has a, a really nice key, actually. Take a look in the uh, walk around video for this key. I, I really love the key on this vehicle, specifically. I know it's a weird thing to comment on, but it's a nice key. Uh, when you remote start the car, it you know warms up the cabin, does its whole thing. It'll run for about 30 minutes, I believe, which is, which is great. I think you can also set that as a timer in the settings here. But the best part is when you get in, you don't have to click the start button. It just knows you're in, and then you drive away. And that's awesome so as long as the keys in the vehicle and you put your foot in foot on the brake and put it in driving it just goes you don't actually need to hit the start button so many smart little features in this vehicle that make daily life easier first off getting in and out of it's awesome we'll talk more about that in the walk around video the uh, overall hybrid system is one of the best drivetrains I have ever driven this engine with this six-speed transmission with this electric motor combination all on the front axle is 
stellar. And you guys know how particular I am about drivetrain oddities and weird things where there's a little bit of cold weather lag and you know I'm really quite quite harsh on, on evaluating vehicle drivetrains, especially when it comes to hybrid and electric systems. But here, this is one of the most seamless and well calibrated drive lines I have ever tested in ever. Uh, really well done. So let's talk about what this drive line consists of, and then we'll talk about how it drives in the city environment. So we have, again, that 1.6 liter turbocharged engine that makes peak torque from 1500 RPM. So this is a very low stress engine, doesn't need to rev out. In fact, when you put it in manual first gear, it only revs to what sounds like 3000 RPM before it upshifts. Uh, you know, it has paddle shifters to control the six speed transmission, I don't use them. We'll see how it is in the canyon. At least in, in the city, you just put it in drive. The thing is, this engine makes so much torque wherever you are in the power band, paired with all of that torque from the electric system. By the way, it's a, a battery pack system that runs at 270 volts. There's an AC permanent magnet motor. I don't know the kilowatt hour usable size of the battery pack. It can't be much because very rarely does it actually drive in electric vehicle mode. We'll get into that more. But in terms of the power that it produces, is is, uh, is fantastic. So great seamless transmission, I think, for being a six speed, as long as you're driving comfortably, stays out of the way and, and very unintrusive, very comfortable around the city. Then we get to the brake pedal, which has to blend regenerative braking with friction brakes. And this is a point of problem for many vehicles. They have a hard time blending that regen and then they have to switch to friction. Here, seamless brake pedals nice and firm I can watch on the gauge when it goes to charge when it runs out of charge we're blending blending uh, friction brakes here just a great feeling brake pedal uh, real confidence inspiring brake pedal too when you stand on it this thing's got some got some braking power to hold it back too uh, steering wheel itself lovely uh, and steering weight is extremely light and easy and just uh, maneuverable around town this is a quite a large car I mean three row SUV uh, you know we're not talking telluride size but one down and uh, feels just like driving a normal car except you do have all this space so the viewpoints out no blind spots if if any there are there's a uh, blind spot monitor. It should say if there are any <laughs> it's still the morning for me too and uh, really just a great uh, great comfortable city driving experience now let's talk about when it does electric and when it does uh, combustion driving so here we are driving slowly and we see an EV indication on the dash and this EV indication should in theory tell you when the combustion engines off and you're driving electric but it doesn't <laughs> which makes no sense to me, but other Hyundai Kia products are like this as well. Uh, the EV stands for only when the electric motor is powering the vehicle. There are certain conditions, engine warm up, uh, cabin heat requirements, cabin cooling requirements, engine maintenance cycle type things that require occasionally the engine to be on but not powering the wheels. For example, engine braking. If you're going down a hill and you downshift it a couple times, the engine's on, it's spun up. Uh, but the EV indication's still on, and I guess that kind of bothers me. Whatever the engine's turning, I don't want an EV indication. It makes you think you're driving electric more than you are, and I think that's a little bit misleading, if I'm honest. So, I would say, uh, Factoring in this screen here, there's a screen I can pull up on the central instrument cluster that tells you truly, you know, what's going where in terms of the power. Uh, this car does not use the electric only bit quite often. What you do get is great extended start stop operation. When you come to a stoplight, never once have I had the engine have to kick on due to electrical demand. Nice electric smart car painted in the best colors just going by there. Um, and pulling away from a stoplight, if I gently accelerate, we're still in electric mode. Parking sensors are going off. Look, we're still in electric. It shifts in electric mode because the transmission is, a, is behind the electric motor. Still in electric mode. But you can see this is about as hard as I can push it while in EV mode. Uh, and, and traffic, you know, is just far ahead. But if you're gentle on the throttle, if you're in drive-throughs, if you're in a real urban stop-and-go environment, 
it will stay electric mode. But now the combustion engine just kicked on when I lifted off the accelerator pedal. It does some weird, weird things. Um, but, but if you just ignore all of that and just drive it like you would just drive to the store, uh, it's going to be much more efficient than just a regular combustion vehicle. And um, great great smoothness like you wouldn't know when the gas engines on or off or on or whatever it just feels really nice I think so good drivetrain around town the best part about this car though and this is gonna be my final point about talking about how it drives in the city before we take it up in the canyons is the off the line acceleration uh, because you have all that electric torque it pretty much gives it all to you at zero before even it can have a chance to spin spin up the engine uh, you know when the engine's off it takes a second for for it to run the starter generator then it for it to, to fire up boost up and rev up and so this is a lot going on with the combustion engine but the but the electric motors are tuned for so much down low torque that it doesn't matter and if anything it'll just spin the tires off the line uh, like especially in the rain or in poor weather conditions if you just floor it from a stop it's just in your Kia Sorento laying burnouts in the dry too it'll even chirp the tires and you get a little bit of wheel hop uh, these wheels themselves are really small with a very big tire and uh, that this is on purposeful of course for range so what I would like to do is demonstrate that off the line acceleration. So I'm gonna put the car into sport mode. So now we are in sport. We are gonna turn on a little side road here. Let's just go down this one. I'm gonna to come to a stop and then I'm just going to floor it in the Sorento hybrid. So we'll just do it right here. No one's behind us. Quick coming to a stop and boom, big torque wheel hop, traction control, early upshift, but it'll just spin the tires. <laughs> Super, uh, actually like totally impressive acceleration around town. Uh, very electric vehicle like in the way that it, uh, the, in the way that it uh, accelerates. Really kind of fun actually. Great, great around town car. For example, Uber driving situations. I can't think of a more perfect vehicle than this. Just comfortable to spend the time in. Great safety technology all throughout and um, looks pretty good too. So let's get it up in the canyons and see how this thing dries when we turn it up to 11. Sounds good. Now you join us on the roads by the canyon. So let's just build up some speed. Sport mode on, traction control, disabled and stability off. I, I like to turn everything off just so I get a true impression of chassis dynamics off. Let's go, full speed. Get that nice chatter. <laughs> it just is so funny because the tires are so large, the suspension's so soft, and then you have that much power going to a front wheel drive type situation where it will just wheel up. <laughs> All right, let's get it in. Wow, okay, impressive acceleration to begin. Uh, this engine is a very interesting combination. Like I mentioned, all of the positives in the city, you do have some negatives here. Now, this six-speed transmission is uh, very basic in its driving dynamics. It almost drives like a transmission from the early 2000s. There's no rev matching on the downshifts. Um, it's very smooth in its operation, but I find when I use the paddles that it kind of drags the downshifts. The thing is, as well, the throttle mapping is interesting too. There's a kick down switch, right? Which typically is to tell the transmission to kick down to the lowest gear possible. However, that's not totally true here. It is in a sense, it does kick down when you hit the kick down switch, but it also, is your power limitation so to get full power you have to go past the kick down switch to get everything working to get you to move and it's not like just a little bump in power it's like you hit the kick down switch and it's good and then you push it down and it's like ooh, this thing really gets pretty spicy when you when you hit the pedal all the way down to the floor now right now I have the car just regular drive and the reason I like regular drive is because the the transmission again doesn't really uh, rev match on the downshift so what I'm able to do in drive is just hit the kick down switch let it downshift under power to get us out of corners like this and use that big torque band you know sometimes having gears can make up for an engine that has a very narrow power band think of that 
diesel Suburban, for example, where it had that 10-speed automatic transmission, and it kept the revs at between like a 500 RPM range for maximum acceleration. That's where having that many gears is useful. When you have an engine that has a torque curve from 1500 all the way up, like, uh, you know, what, what do you need all those gears for? You just hit your foot down and it's got power no matter where you are. And the power is way faster than you would think. This thing moves um, pretty good for sure. So let's see if we can get this Super Duty out of our way. We cannot. Uh, so what we're gonna do is just pull over here and then we will wait for them to get out of the way. Uh, turning radius, fantastic turning radius. And let's just put it in reverse. Nice backup camera. And we'll just let him get ahead for a little bit. It's starting to snow up here actually, which is pretty interesting. What's the temperature out? Uh, 28 degrees, chilly morning, that's for sure. Um, we'll put it in park and talk a little bit more about this drive line. So when you're wide open throttle, everything's just working together and it's sort of all going to the front wheels. And during normal operation, you do not feel any torque steer, but when you're like leaning this thing into a corner and power out, you certainly do. So uh, power's way better than it needs to be. Transmission is underwhelming at this type of driving, but certainly more than capable. We just have someone behind us, so we'll just head out now. And uh, let's talk more steering and chassis and braking feel because uh, this is also quite a, a hugely impressive uh, vehicle in that front. So uh, steering is direct. You have to keep in mind we're on those Nexen something tires, I forget, but pretty low rolling resistance tire, right? And uh, when you put this thing into the corner, it responds unbelievably well. Now it does run pretty high pressure, something like 39 or 40 PSI, I can't remember exactly. But when you get this thing in, it, it goes. The chassis itself is pretty nice as well. Now we're not gonna be getting any lift off oversteer or anything like that into a corner. But if you live on a mountain road, I say often, or if you're gonna be heading up into the mountains, this thing can keep up with some cars, that's for sure. Look, I'm just gonna stuff it in this corner. Big power on the way out. Yeah, just spun out the tires a little bit through there. Yeah, we're getting a little wheel spin. It's doing its job to keep the power going though. And it's starting to snow. <laughs> Definitely quite a bit of lean from the suspension, but not in a bad way. Very controllable chassis. Soaks up all the bumps, of course. Let's try the braking. Whoa, braking is great. Phenomenal brake pedal feeling there. This is a pedal that when you touch it, it just is progressive. You can lean into it more and it just stops. Wow. One of the best brake pedal blended calibrations I have felt if not the best. Let's try some paddle shifting. So now I've got it locked in third gear. Trying out that brake again, feels really nice. I'm just winding it out in third. This is kind of just a third gear kind of car for this road. You just keep it in third and let it, let it pull itself up. And wow, we're getting snow and ice and slippery conditions fairly quickly here, folks. <laughs> I think we may have to call this one short. The canyon drive is not the most important part of this car, of course. <laughs> you can see it upshifts very early if you just rev it at all. That just goes second, third gear. And um, yeah, not a pleasant downshift. Let me demonstrate that for you here, for example. So we're cruising along here in third, right? Let's just say 35 miles an hour when it hits second. Drags the car to downshift it some snowy conditions. It's nice, you get a nice whoosh. When the turbo really goes, you can hear whoosh. But uh, pleasant sounding engine, does not like to rev that much. I think we'll call it a drive here because it's just getting real, real snowy real quickly. And uh, overall, gotta say, uh, for what this vehicle is, which is a, uh, you know, a mommy buggy, a baby buggy, uh, you know, great space throughout. This thing uh, handles like it's actually pretty fun to like take up a back road, plenty of power. Very impressive chassis dynamics here, Kia. Really nice work. Let's take it out on the highway and test some driver assistance. And now we are merging onto the highway, foot down. So of course we know the power is good to get up to speed. That's no problem. This thing is downright quick, dare I say. <laughs> I think I do. So uh, what you can hear beeping in the background there is the lane assist. If you brush a line, like I'm going to here, 
it beeps at you and buzzes the steering wheel. I didn't use my turn signal there because I wanted to test it. But it doesn't necessarily push you back in, just kind of buzzes. Now at lower speed or maybe at less angle of attack, it will push you back in, but in that particular case, it didn't. So great safety tech on this thing. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail here in a second, but let's talk about uh, comfort and, and efficiency and uh, noise. So first off, unbelievably quiet up here in the cab. Now I do hear a bit more wind noise coming from the back of the car. It's almost as if like it sounds like the fans are on full blast back there. They're not. Um, and, and it's very faint. But up here, almost dead silent. Now the glass is not double paned, but I believe it's laminated. It has to be one of the quietest cars in the segment, especially considering the price of under $40,000 for this nicely equipped EX hybrid. Uh, this thing's 38 grand, I think. Um, it's just amazing. So in terms of cruising at 75, you know, that's the speed limit. Let's just pick up the pace a little bit, see how it does a little bit higher speed. Yeah, nice. Really nice. Track straight, quiet, predictable movements of the vehicle. Really great suspension calibration. Soaks the bumps, but then also supports the vehicle in terms of quick little movements. Yep, feels good. Nice, progressive turning. Uh, car, you can feel the tire lean over a little bit and then it darts in. And uh, now we need to test some of the driver assistance. So, on the right side of the steering wheel, test all of the ADAS functionality. So what I'm gonna do is pop in the left lane here, give us some room. I'm gonna click mode. This is gonna set adaptive cruise control. I haven't set it 80 miles an hour. There's four levels of distance, four, three, two, and one, of course. Uh, we'll put it to two. Then, of course, right now I have the lane assist on, which is a separate button controlled by my knee. And this is the, the warning. If I just brush a line, you can see it pushes me back in. So the assist functionality does work. But then on top of that, there's an active centering portion, which is this button down here on the wheel. And this actively lane centers the vehicle using the camera. So now it's tracking down the middle of the line, uh, middle of the lane, I should say. And um, it'll just go all day. It doesn't, doesn't have a capacitive steering wheel, looks for torque in the steering rack to see if you're paying attention. And very comfortable. One of the things I like about this particular system is you don't necessarily need to be on adaptive cruise control for the steering to work. Take a look. I've canceled adaptive cruise control. It says keep your hands on the wheel. There we go. I jiggled it. And now it's still lane centering, even though I'm controlling the acceleration and brakes. See, look, I'll floor it, and it's still doing lane centering. I'll hit the brakes. It's still doing lane centering. And it'll do this around town, too. You can kind of just keep this on, control the acceleration and braking forces, and the car pretty much does everything. I think it's a really, really neat touch, I have to say. So let's accelerate past this truck. You can see the passing power there. Really nice. That's just for reference of the truck test. Uh, you pull up next to it and you can blow right by it. So that's pretty good. Let's lock it back in on adaptive cruise control. And let's see what happens if I don't touch the steering wheel. So what I'm testing now is sort of the vehicle's response to wake me up, to make me pay attention. What's it going to do? So no hands on the wheel. I'm ready to take over if something is to happen. Uh, I get my first warning here that says keep hands on the steering wheel. I'm noticing the wheel itself hunt a little bit. Uh, I don't actually feel it through the chassis. It's such little movements, but I can see the wheel kind of go left, right, left, right. Now it still says keep hands on steering wheel. Dinging at me, the steering wheel has gone red now. There's a car right behind me, so I'm going to be mindful if it slams on the brakes to just mat the throttle because I don't want to get rear-ended. It's still dinging at me just covering the wheel in case it does something weird. Will it just go all day long digging at me? I think the Hyundai products do that. Eventually they should shut off though. So now it says lane following assist canceled. It's pushing me to the edge of the lane. Now lane departure warnings on. And all it did was turn off the active lane centering. It didn't grab my seatbelt. It didn't beep at me all that loudly. It just uh, very gently went and said, uh, you know, this is uh, just, just said I'm off and good luck. I'm sending you off the road. And then you have lane departure warning and assist pushing you back in. You know, I, I, I am 
a bigger fan of systems that try and grab your attention a bit more and bring you to a stop with the hazards on and beep the horn and flash the lights and put the hazards on because it could truly be in a medical emergency or in the vehicle. If you were to fall asleep or to pass out and this system were to just keep going, you would eventually just blow out of the lane departure warning and it would still end up accelerating into a ditch is what it seems like. So not not to go and overly criticize Kia for their terrible warning system, but damn, that's not great, folks. Uh, it should do more to protect the driver in a situation such as an inattentive situation that we just displayed to the vehicle. So uh, great driver assistance for cruising. Look, it's doing a great job lane centering. Just don't fall asleep or don't have a medical emergency because the car does not have your back there. Uh, in terms of other, other noise, quiet, suspension, smooth, steering, predictable, space, great. All around, gotta say, this car is uh, a true winner. One of the best I've driven, uh, not just in this category, but of vehicles in total. For its intended purpose, it hauls six people around, tons of technology, great USB ports everywhere, good enough sound system, amazing power, good styling. I, I don't know if there's a better like uh, everyday family vehicle on the market for the money. You know, we just had a, a Suburban or a Tahoe would be a little bit bigger than this, of course, but that's 70 grand now. And in actuality, this kind of does the same exact thing that that vehicle does. Uh, when you really boil it down to, I'm just going to bring the family from A to B on the highway, this, uh, this, this kind of does it. Now, if you're going to tow or you need four wheel drive, that, that's where it gets a little different. But for 99% of what I see people using these vehicles for, again, here in Colorado, cruising around town and up and down the highways, uh, this is this is more than more than adequate and actually might even be better. And we'll end it on that note. Thanks so much for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video, and we'll see you on the next one.